Hey Life Kids, are you ready to talk about Jesus? Hey Life Kids, and welcome to another one of our online mini services. I hope you enjoyed last week's lesson on how to deal with fear. Today, I wanted to try a little something new with you in this lesson. So as you're watching, I wanted to see if you can figure out how many times I touch my ear. And at the end of the service, I'll let you know if you got it right. It's my little way of helping you pay attention to what you're hearing and what you're watching. Sounds good? Yeah! Good. So, pay attention because starting from here forward, keep an eye on how many times I touch my ear. All right, so today we're going to be talking about another big subject, depression. You know, we've all been sad sometimes, and sometimes we're sad and we just can't shake out of it. That's being called depressed. Many times we're depressed and we feel like weird. You know, we think that we're the only ones who are feeling that way. Well, the truth is, there are many people today who suffer from depression. There were even people in the Bible who suffered from depression. Did you know that there was a caveman in the Bible who suffered from depression? No, not that caveman on the screen, but a different kind of caveman. Do you remember David in the Bible? Well, he's the guy who killed the giant Goliath with a small stone. He's the guy who was anointed to be king of Israel after Saul, and he was only a shepherd boy at the time. You can read a lot about King David in the Old Testament, especially in the books of Samuel and Chronicles. Let's take a look at a quick video that summarizes his life. The Miracle of Mercy, David and Saul. This is David. Hey. David was a shepherd who lived in Israel. David was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel when he was just a boy. But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true because there was another king of Israel named Saul. Saul was strong and tall and looked like everything a king should be. But Saul did not follow God like he was supposed to. And for that reason, God chose to take the kingdom from Saul's family and give it to David's. David became a great warrior. Arr! And everyone in the kingdom loved David. Huh? This made Saul jealous and Saul hated David because he thought he would try to kill him and take the throne from his family. So Saul wanted to kill David. Whoa! Saul hunted David, but he couldn't catch him. One day, Saul heard that David was in the wilderness of En Gedi. So Saul gathered 3,000 of his skilled fighters and went to find and kill David. During Saul's search for David, he went in a cave to relieve himself. Well, this very cave was the one where David and his men were hiding. And when David's men saw that Saul was unaware that David was there and unable to defend himself, they said, Now's your chance, David. This is God telling you that he will give you your enemy to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of Saul's robe. But then David began to think that it was not right for him to take Saul's life. For no matter how much hardship and difficulty Saul had caused him, it was still not right for him to hurt the one who God had placed over Israel. So David told his men to back off, and he did not let them kill King Saul. They waited until after Saul had left the cave, 
and then David ran out of the cave and shouted after Saul, My king, why do you listen to people who say I am trying to harm you? Look, I cut it off, but I didn't kill you. This proves that I am not trying to harm you and that I have not sinned against you, even though you've been hunting me. David went on to promise that he would never harm Saul. David said that God would be the one to protect David and to rescue him from Saul's power. Saul said, Is that really you, David? And he began to cry. Saul said, You are a better man than I. You have been amazingly kind to me today, for when God put me in a place where you could have killed me, you didn't do it. Who else would have done this? And now I realize that you are surely going to be king and the kingdom of Israel will flourish under your rule. But promise me that when that happens, you will not kill my family. So David promised that he would not hurt Saul's family, and they left each other in peace. Now Saul continued to cause difficulty in David's life. But David kept his promise, and in time, David did become king of Israel. David was dearly loved by God and Israel did flourish under his rule because David did everything that God wanted him to do, and he was a man after God's own heart. Wow, what a man King David was, and what a life he had. The Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. Was he perfect? No way. But he did love God and tried to serve him the best that he could. As you saw a little bit in the video, there was a time in his life when the current king of Israel, Saul, got angry for David being anointed as the next king of Israel, and he began to chase David all over the country trying to kill him. David had to run for his life. He ended up hiding in a cave, and here is where we find our caveman sitting and feeling very lonely and depressed. And do you know what David did at that time? He wrote a song. He did that a lot actually. He wrote almost the entire book of Psalms, which are a bunch of songs to God. You would think that maybe David wrote a sad song, but he didn't. We're gonna look at several things that David wrote in the song to teach us what we need to remember when we're depressed. A lot of times, we're embarrassed when we're sad. We try to hide the fact that we are sad or feeling depressed by putting on a fake smile and trying to tell everybody that we're okay, I'm okay, don't worry about it, I'm good. But David didn't do that. He knew that it's okay to be sad and that it's okay to cry. He wrote in Psalms chapter 34 verse 6, I cried out to the Lord in my suffering. Does that sound like he was hiding the fact that he was sad? Not at all. You see, when we're sad, we don't need to hide our sadness from God and act like we're not. Sometimes we just have to cry and let it out to God. Don't hold it in, let it out. Feel free to cry and honest about your feelings to God. David did. He said he was suffering and sad. He let God know what he was feeling. He admitted his feelings and he wasn't ashamed to cry. David also teaches us something else that we need to remember when we're depressed. David teaches us that we're not alone in the cave. And as a matter of fact, we're never alone. David says in Psalms chapter 34 verse 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. You see, when we're sad, we feel like we're facing our depression all alone. But we aren't. God is close to us at all times, especially when we're sad. He's there to help us. All we have to do is call on Him. And do you know what? God hears you when you call. David remembered what we need to remember. The Lord hears His people when they call to Him for help. When you're sad and depressed, call to God for help. He hears you every time. Have you ever tried to call someone on a cell phone and it kept dropping the call or it said that they were out of range? Or maybe you tried to call someone and got a busy signal. That's pretty annoying. Well, God is always in range and He's never busy to take your call. When you call on Him, He answers. Isn't that awesome that when we call on God, He always hears us and He's there to give us the joy 
that we need. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And the last thing I want to share with you today, Life Kids, is that the joy of the Lord is your strength. David says in Psalm chapter 34, verse 5, that those who look to him will be radiant with joy. And the Bible also tells us that the joy of the Lord is your strength. When we're sad and depressed, God will give us the joy that we need for strength to make it through our sad time. Depression doesn't have to last forever. Call on God and let Him fill you with His joy. Let's take a look at our power verse from the Bible today. It's found in an Old Testament book called Nehemiah. And it says, Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The next time you're feeling sad, remember what we talked about here today. That it's okay to cry. That we're not alone. That God hears us when we call on Him and that the joy of knowing Jesus is our strength. What a powerful lesson we had today, boys and girls. We looked at the life of David and we learned on how to deal with depression. So I pray that you learned something today and that you remember what we learned today, that God is always with you and let His joy be your strength. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the young boys and girls, God, that were able to hear this message today. And I pray, Father God, for those that are feeling sad and maybe lonely, Father God, as we're stuck in our homes for this time. Help them to remember, God, that they are never alone, that you are always with them, and that it's okay to cry, that they can call on you anytime, Jesus, and that you are there to hear and help them during this time. Father God, I thank you that you love us, that you take care of us, and that you're going to continue to take care of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What a great lesson that was today, boys and girls. And I just want you to remember that the next time you're feeling sad or maybe depressed, talk to Jesus about it. Talk to your parents about it. Let them know how you're feeling. Now, before I let you go today, did you catch how many times I touched my ear? It should have been seven, seven times. So I hope you were paying attention and let's see you next time on our next Life Kids service. God bless you and remember, walk in faith and you'll walk in victory. So nice to have you here with me today. So long now. So long now. Bye bye. Bye. See you later, alligator and a wild crocodile.